Goeie naand Alwine Fredericks, goeie naand Manisse Snel, ek kom gewoon vinnig vinnig live, ek gaan weer geskel word, want ek is live en ek het van niemand gezien, but you know what, en ek moet anywhere weer gaan, want ek is nou rehearsal vir Anthem Essay, so ek moet en ek zoon toe gaan. Good evening, Gideon Koenraad, Erika Josephs, goeie naand, Estal Braun, goeie naand. Goeienaand, man van die Heere, Mario Koetsie, bless you sir, Bianca Williams, good evening, Desiree Jafta, goeienaand. Ja, ek speel hier vanavond muziek hier, ek moet nou net vannacht begin praat, hier so voordat ek nou nie weer kans krij nie. Goeienaand, Who else? Sonja, Talita Fortuyn, goeie naand. Hi, Estel Polse, goed om jou te sien. Sier groete daar vir my neef, vir Lindel. Sunita Marcus, goeie naand, goeie naand. Ja, tag so hele paar mense, so veel is wat ek kan. En share die broadcast, so veel is wat ek kan. So please share the broadcast. I think we're going to go into some very deep things. I, I, I probably shouldn't have done it now because I don't think I'll have enough time to, to do it because I have to be at rehearsal at Anthem Essay and these guys are not going to, um, they're not going to play with me if they see I'm live and I should be at the rehearsal. Um, Granita Green, goeienaand, uh, family. Echan, I'm, I'm going to jump away with this because I think I won't have enough time to actually to deal with this topic and if we don't have time, we'll, we'll call this part one. Uh, and then I think we can always do another part two at a later stage. But please tag a few people because I think this is an important topic. Um, um, personally, in my own life, I have had the, the grace on my life to be able to, to see in the realm of the Spirit, to be able to communicate with God, and God communicates with me uh, at a, on a regular basis. Um, and it doesn't matter what the state of my life is, God communicates with me, even if... Um, I went through a, a dip in my life spiritually, God never stopped speaking to me. Um, and, and, and I'm always one of those people that are first to, to mention that and to acknowledge actually that I don't know everything prophetically. I'm not um, a Hubert Angel or a TB Joshua or a Makananisa. I'm not any of these big prophets. I am just Gerald. And for some reason, God just speaks to me. And I don't know why. I've always wondered why, Lord, why did you do you speak to me? But he speaks to me. Um, he shows me certain things and certain times and these things come into fulfillment. And I don't know why it is that case, but it is that, that way. Um, and it's always been that way. Um, and I thank God that when I went to see Prophet T.B. Joshua in 2014 um, and, and received the laying on of hands, that when I came back to South Africa, you know, my ministry spiritually, I just grew spiritually. My faith was boosted. And, and, and I just went deeper into the prophetic. And for me, that was just something beautiful. So I want to share that with you because I think many people, they, they make a few mistakes when they approach the throne of God. Now, people think, yeah, approaching the throne of God is just jumping on your knees in the morning. You know, jump out of bed quickly on your knees, pray, ah, Lord, bless me for the day. And they think prayer is it, is that. But, but that's not prayer. You know, that's just the, the, the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more about prayer that we miss because we just quickly jump on our knees and we pray and we tell our story and there we go. And we start our day and I think we make a mistake because we miss, miss so much when it comes to the prophetic, when it comes to the spiritual realm, because God is able to communicate with any of us if we just make the effort, the time and the effort to actually do it properly. And there's a certain way that one approaches the throne of God. You can't just remember God is the king of kings. You, you cannot approach the throne of a king uh, just by speaking whatever you want to speak. You have to wait. You know, until you are acknowledged, there are certain things that you have to do. So you, there, there are rules and regulations and the same counts for the, the realm of the spirit and for the heavenly things. You can't just jump out and speak and lash out against God, pray something. There you go, mumble a few words and there you go. Because those things, as Jesus taught us, 
uh, are, if, uh, are ineffective if it is just vain repetitions. In other words, words that are not carefully thought through, words and phrases that we pray that doesn't come from the heart and the spirit, they just vain words that we say because we think we, we are being heard. And, and Jesus taught us that that type of prayer is ineffective. So it is important to know that there's a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it. And I want to help a few people tonight with this. How do we approach the throne of God? And how do we approach the throne of God to the extent that God communicates back to us? Because the problem with most of us is that we can communicate with him, but we don't always get an answer back. And, and that has been the frustration. And so I think it is important for us to know how to approach the throne of God. Also, another aspect to that is how does one approach the throne of God to the extent that God then later speaks to you through dreams, visions, prophecies? How do you carry that glory out of your prayer room into ministry, into the world, into your workplace, into a service, into a church? How do you do that? Because remember the Bible says that Moses was in the presence of God. The glory of God came upon him on, onto his face. And then when he, when he left, the glory went with him. In a, in a certain place in the book of Exodus, uh, I think it's 39, Moses says to God, I'm not going to go if your presence doesn't go with me. And so you need to take that presence with you. And, and not many people can do that. Um, many believers can do that. And there's a way that you approach the throne of God in order for you to achieve that level in the realm of the Spirit. Let me greet a few people again. Angelix Kerman, God bless you. Vanessa Hoffman, good evening. Um, uh, Delaine Fortein, good evening. Eloise Olifir, good evening. I see your comments and I see your, your hellos and I see the people who, who share. Good evening, John Fass, God bless you. So how does one do that? And I think it is important for us to know how to do, to do that. Many people ask, um, how do I hear the voice of God? John Fass saying from India, good evening, John. Um, uh, Danzel Lindner, good evening, sir. Marisha Mandy case, God bless you. So how does one approach the throne of God to, to, to get that type of effect? Um, I have seen the prophetic very evident in my life where I can step into a service and God can start speaking to me and show me things about people in the audience. Um, to the extent that a person would come for prayer and another prophet could be busy prophesying for that person and I could sit there, but God can still speak to me and tell me what the cause of that person's problem is and take me to the root of it. I have seen it before. I have seen it on many, many. You can see there are some videos on, on, on social media where, where God uses me in this way. So, so that has always been there, but, but there's a way that you get that. And I think it is important for us to be taught how to do that. And not many people want to teach on this. Not many prophets and pastors wants to teach people on this because, you know, it's almost like because when you teach people about this, people also become clever and people also become spiritually mature. And then I am no longer the, the main man, you know. And so therefore people don't want to teach on these things. But it is my desire that you must grow. It is my desire that you grow spiritually. So I want to share these secrets, my secrets with you of how my journey with God is when I approach the throne of God. Um, God bless you, uh, John. Uh, he's watching for the first time. Aleta McGee, God bless you. Felicity Jansen, good evening. Desiree Jaff, Jaff good evening. Um, yes, so, 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 so let me go into a few things. My time is running out. I'm so sorry because I need to go to a, a rehearsal with Anthem Essay and my time is running out, so I'm going to do this very, very quickly. So like I said, let's do a part one, then we do a part two, then we do a part three if we have to. And then even at a certain point, you can even ask questions and we can see how that we can deal with this. So when we approach the throne of God, I think the most important thing when you approach the throne of God, good evening, Miranda Thomas, uh, Thomas from Malibu. Um, the, the, the first thing you need to do is when you want to approach the throne of God for prayer, for worship, for, for um, quality time with God, good evening, Bradley Boyson, is the first thing you need to do is you need to be like a good student. In fact, you need to be a good student. And a good student always has a pen and a piece of paper. Now, when I, when I first went to university, I think in 2004 or 2003, I went to the university and I had a lecture. And this specific lecturer, you know, always had a problem with the fact that whenever she spoke to us, none of us had a pen in our hand. And so she kept on saying to us, 
always have a pen in your hand, always have a piece of paper, because there's always something important that you will need to write down. And so I learned this skill very early uh, in, in my university career that even today, while I'm now a lecturer at a university, when I have a meeting, I have a pen and a piece of paper. If somebody wants to say, if somebody says to me, oh, can I please speak to you quickly? I've got a few things to ask you. I take a, immediately take a piece of pen and a paper and I write things down. In fact, I've got a book here that I write my stuff down. So. Always make sure when you approach the throne of God, when you want to approach the throne of God, take a piece of pen and paper with you. It's just being a good student of the word. Because if God had to speak to you in the, that quality time that you have with him, and you don't have a pen and a paper to write it down, how will you remember it? You need to write it down. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. He says that write the vision plainly so that they might see it, though you see it, might run with it. So it is important for you to write it down. This is why what happened when you see the book of uh, uh, Revelations, John had to write things down. God instructed him to write down the visions for the end time. The same with Daniel, the same with many of the apostles. This is why we have a Bible today, because somebody had the wisdom and the common sense to be a good student and write these things down. So the first thing you need to do when you want to approach the throne of God for prayer, for worship, for quality time, whatever, it is important, number one, get a piece of, uh, get a book, get yourself a book, right? I call it my revelation book. Get a book and a piece of pen or, uh, or uh, uh, a piece of, uh, or a marker or a, uh, a pencil, take it and write down, right? So you take your book and your pen, that's the first thing you do when you approach the throne of God. Good evening, um, Karina, Julius, and Lucinda Mankupan. Good evening, um, <laughs> um, So that's number one. Write, take a pen and a, and, and a book with you. Right? Be a good student. The second thing is go to a quiet place. Be removed from disturbances. Switch off the TV, switch off the radio. If there's somebody around you that talks a lot, remove yourself from that person because that usually irritates my spirit if I'm around people that talk too much. I don't like people that talk too much. I don't spend time with people who talk too much. They irritate my spirit. I, I, I tend to be away from them. So remove yourself. Go to a quiet place. That's number two, right? Switch off the TV, switch off the radio. Lock yourself in the room. Even the Bible says it in the book of Matthew chapter 6 that you, when you want to pray, go into your room, lock the door behind you. So that's the, sec the second thing. Go to a quiet place. Remember that Moses went to the mountain. Um, Elijah went to the mountain. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives uh, to a secret place. He, al he always distanced himself from his, from his disciples when he needed quiet time. So the second thing is, Go to a quiet place. The third thing is put on some good worship music. Now, this is very important because I usually have one song that is in season for me. You know, so, so at the moment, a song that is in season for me is a song by Maverick Worship um, and Maverick Music. And th there's a song that they sing called um, Used to This. Th that song is in the season for me now, meaning that every time I go into prayer and I approach the throne of God, I first put on that song. So put up, put on some good worship music. It doesn't have to be international music. It can be any song that is in your spirit at that season of your life. But it has to be something. It has to be a worship song that is in season. Because what I find is sometimes when I play a song that is not in season in my heart, then that also disturbs my spirit. It disturbs, it irritates my spirit. So I would switch off that, that phone immediately. Um, I, I'm very sensitive, so the prophetic is very sensitive to music. Um, music plays a very important role in the prophetic realm. And this is why in the Old Testament, when the, the king came to the prophet and he said to the prophet, please prophesy for me, the prophet said to him, bring me a minstrel, a person that can play music. And the moment that he played the music, then the Holy Spirit came upon him and he prophesied. The same thing went for David when Saul was troubled by a demonic spirit. The Bible says that David played on his harp and the demons would flee from Saul. So music has a very important role in the spiritual realm. And this is, it can even disturb the Holy Spirit, right? And this is why even in a service, I would get to a service and especially when I preach, um, or when I pray for people, then uh, a musician would play these jazz chords that, ir that irritates my spirit. And I would immediately say to that guy, rather stop playing 
um, or play something proper, play a worship song, right? Because that disturbs the flow of the Holy Spirit. So when you approach the throne of God, number two, number three, sorry, put on some good worship music. And, and let me give you a, a, a good advice. It usually has to be a song that is in season for you. A song that means something good for you at that specific point. Oh my goodness. Um, the fourth thing. You have to remember that even when you pray, even when you want to have a prayer session with God, you cannot do it without Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has to guide you even when you pray. You can't just, I, I, I find it very, um, um, I find it very, not awkward, but I find it very interesting how people can just jump up and decide, oh, I'm going to pray now. I, I, that doesn't make sense to me because if the prayer isn't led by the Holy Spirit, then that prayer is in vain. That is why we call it praying in the Holy Ghost. Because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, then you need to be led by the Holy Ghost into prayer. Remember the Bible says that after Jesus was baptized, he was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert. So it is important for us to be led by the Holy Spirit even into prayer. You cannot do it without Holy Spirit. right? Otherwise, it is not prayer in the Spirit. Um, remember that the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit knows the will of God. And He makes the will of God known unto us. The Spirit knows the mind and the thoughts of God. And this way also the Spirit helps us to pray in accordance with the will of God. So the Holy Spirit needs to help you to pray in accordance with God's will. Because otherwise, how will you pray according to God's will? He says the Holy Spirit knows the will of God. So the Holy Spirit makes the will of God known unto you. Therefore, you are able to pray according to the will of God. So number four, you cannot do it without Holy Spirit. You can't just randomly jump up and decide I'm going to pray. You know, it, it, it doesn't work like that. That type of prayer is empty, is void, and, and it is outside of the will of the Holy Spirit. It is outside, outside of the timing of God. And, and this leads to my, to my fifth point. You, you have to be drawn into the presence of God by the Holy Spirit. You get drawn into the presence of God by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit draws you in into the presence of God. You can't just jump up. Nobody just walks into the presence of a king. Nobody forces their way into the presence of a king. Yes, the Bible says that we can boldly, boldly approach the throne of God. But it doesn't mean you can just bulge in whenever you want. You know, you, you can't just do that. Holy Spirit needs to draw you in. Um, and the same principle applies usually when, um, when you're fighting demons in the realm of the Spirit or for spiritual warfare. You have people that just want to do spiritual warfare and just jump up and do spiritual warfare and speak in a bunch of tongues and think, ah, that's spiritual warfare. That's not spiritual warfare. If spiritual warfare is not done by the leading of the Holy Spirit, then you are fighting a dangerous fight. You don't just rush into a fight with demons. You don't just, you, you have to wait on the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit must say to you now. It, for example, it is like being in a marathon. Remember when, when, when marathon runners, they start, there's usually somebody that shoots that little gun thing and says, go. Now, when that happens, that is what the Holy Spirit does. Right? He has to draw you in. And, and, and when, you, when you get that notification, then you know it is time for you to step into that. Otherwise, your prayer will be empty. Otherwise, there's no anointing on you. And this is what I've seen in many, many men of God. Very often when there's a demon that they need to fight, they just jump up and speak because they think, oh, we've got the power. But listen, if, it's not, if you're not drawn by the Holy Spirit to do that, if you're not um, inclined by the Holy Spirit to do that or led by the Holy Spirit to do that, it means that you're stepping ahead of God or a stepping ahead of Holy Spirit, and He's not there. And I think it is very important for us to understand that it is possible for you to to, to even pray, and Holy Spirit is not is not is not uh, involved in that prayer, right? Otherwise, it is not prayer in the Holy Ghost. And I think that is something that we need to understand as well. Oh, guys, we're getting deep. Yes, so, so my time is running out, guys. I think I'm now at, at point five. Let me jump to, to point six, right? The following thing is important. I will post my notes, obviously. But the following thing is important. I even feel the power of the Holy Spirit as I'm speaking because Holy Spirit said to me, 
go live now. So, so Holy Spirit is with me. And I always see this when I'm at a, for example, I always get invited to go and preach at places, right? And I've been preaching since the age, since the age of 16. I always say this and I'm 36 years now. So I've been preaching for a long time. And I always get invited to go and preach at places. Even today, I would get many invitations to come and preach, but I don't say yes to everything. There, there are many times that I don't even respond, or sometimes I will respond and say, sorry, not at this time. Because if Holy Spirit doesn't lead me to preach, if Holy Spirit doesn't give me a word to preach, under what authority am I preaching? And where's the where's the anointing that rests on me to speak that particular word? So if I'm not drawn to do that, then I'm not going to do it. Let's go to number six. If this, remember, we're speaking about how do we approach the throne of God? How do we approach the prophetic realm so that so that we can have dreams and visions and prophetic words and accuracy in prophecy? Right? How, how do we get that? Number six. Silence is better than shouting. I need to say that again. Number six. Silence is better than shouting. There are too many people who go into prayer. But they shout so loud, they, they, in, they, they're really just making a noise. And there's nothing wrong with praying loud. If that is your thing, do it. But, but I find personally that silence is better than shouting. Um, and, and, and this comes from my experience. If you are in prayer and you spend most of the time speaking, shouting and proclaiming, it is difficult to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. If you are in prayer and you spend most of your time speaking, shouting, proclaiming, it is difficult to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit. Remember when Elijah in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, when Elijah was on the mountain, the Bible says God was not in the fire, he was not in the thunder, he was not in the wind, but he was in the stillness when a still small voice came and God spoke. So for me, silence is better than shouting. My goodness. Because some people shout so much that it is difficult for them to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and ever since I have been a believer, a born again Christian, and ever since I've been active in the prophetic ministry, Holy Spirit has never shouted. He always speaks with a whisper. So silence is better than shouting. God bless you. I pray for you to come to Ramona Collins. We are going to do a few uh, River September, good evening, good evening, powerful tools, she says from Barberton, good evening, uh, Susie Boys, good evening, um, Cynthia Lucas, God bless you, good evening, Patsy, Patsy Fisher, good evening, um, Alan Devere, God bless you, sir, he says he loves the practical tools, powerful, he says he can confirm that, um, Rosemary Swartz, God bless you, who else did I didn't greet, Delaine Fortin, God bless you. So, so that is very important. Remember, you cannot go into the presence of a king and start shouting. Imagine if I had to go to the king of England or the queen of England, right? And I just barge in and I say, I want to speak to the queen of England. People are going to say, we're going to lock you up, bro. You, you don't belong here. Like, like even if you are part of the royal family, you don't, you, even if you are a grandson of the royal family, you, you're not, you don't have the right to just jump in and barge in and speak to the queen. It doesn't work like that. Never mind shouting. Well, I mean, you don't have the right to just go and shout. So I think it is important for us to remember, yes, when we speak to God, I think we need to be proper. Silence is better than shouting. Look, if you speak to demons, even Jesus casted out demons with a loud voice, it is important for you to remember when we speak to demons, you can raise your voice. Right. And you can get excited and whatever. But when you speak to God, I would encourage people, you know, silence is better than shouting. Calm down, get, get you know, get a bit calm down and listen to the whisper of the Holy Spirit so that you don't miss it. And this is often why prophets would prophesy, but they prophesy incorrectly. This is why prophets would prophesy. But what they prophesy is not really what God said, because you, because there's a process there. Like when you want to prophesy accurately, you need to you need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. You need to hear what Holy Spirit, you need to be open for him. Because if you keep on shouting all the time, you're going to miss it. And God is not in the shouting, right? It is important to, to, to know that, especially when you start out in the prophetic. If you want to hear Holy Spirit, if you want Holy Spirit to work through you and you want to prophesy accurately, listen. 
silence is better than shouting. And this is often why when I, if you see me prophesy at a church or at a crusade, you, you can watch the videos on social media, maybe I'll share some, but you'll see me when I prophesy, then I would walk up and down if I have to. I would walk up and down. I don't care if the church has to wait. If you want to leave, leave. But I will walk up and down that stage and listen carefully to what Holy Spirit is saying. And we will worship until I hear God speak to me. And then I would open up my mouth. And if in that time that I've opened myself up to Holy Spirit, if he doesn't give me a revelation for somebody, then I don't say anything. So that's the type of maturity and obedience that we want and that we need, right? Oh, powerful Erica. Erica, I see your comment there. God bless you. I've, I've had the same experience as well. So silence is better than shouting. And this is why most prophets actually miss it. Um, to be honest, and especially if you are also a, a preacher and you are a man of God, usually we become so experienced at preaching um, and, and being and doing our thing that sometimes we could be in front of a church and we miss Holy Spirit's whisper because we are so so focused on our shouting and, and, and to get the people to shout and to get the people excited and motivated, we miss Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit's whisper. And, and it's important to, to know that. Um, number seven, I'm going to stop here, then I'll do a part two next time around. Um, number seven, always start your time with God. If you, if you want to go into prayer, always start your session with repentance. It's important. Remember, Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, he speaks of dying daily. Remember that the Bible says, if we repent our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. So always start with repentance. This is why if you would go to the Old Testament, who were, which was, a, um, um, which, and, and, the, and the, um, the, or the arrangement of the temple, uh, and the tabernacle, rather, the arrangement of the tabernacle, and how um, before they could, the priest could enter, he had to be washed with blood. He had to, there was the sprinkling of blood because the blood spoke of repentance, the blood spoke of um, the cleansing power. And, and that needed to happen before he could enter into the Holy of Holiness. In fact, he couldn't enter into the Holy of Holies without the blood sacrifice. Now, that was a a shadow and a type of what was to come spiritually. So today we don't enter into a place, put blood on us to go into the presence of God. No, but spiritually we have to say, God, forgive me for the sins that I've committed against you through word, through thought and through deed. And so in repentance, we start our prayer with repentance. It is, it is, it is arrogant for us as believers to just jump into the presence of the King of Kings and you have not repented. Because sin cannot glory in the presence of God. And so it is important for us to start with repentance first before we do anything else. My goodness. Ooh, good evening, Wayden um, Raiders. Uh, good evening, Patsy. Um, good evening, Jody and Swano. God bless you. Yes. So, 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 uh, man, I need to stop here. Otherwise, I will be late for my rehearsal. Um, but 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 let me but let me see how far I get. Number eight, continue now. So so check this. Now you've got your pen, you've got your paper. You've waited on the Holy Spirit to draw you in, right? I, I, for example, I would sit and, and 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 be with friends, or I would sit and I would watch a series, or I would sit and watch a television show with people, and then. All of a sudden, Holy Spirit would speak to me and I would get this desire to leave these people's presence and just go into prayer. And I would go into my room, I would lock the door and I would start praying. Nobody would, would even know why I left. I just leave. And then I go and spend time with God because Holy Spirit would draw me into. And it's almost like he sometimes becomes jealous of us spending too much time with the television or with friends that he sort of draws you in. And you can feel that sense. So number one, when he draws you in, number two, get a piece of pen and paper ready because you need to be a good student and write down whatever he speaks to you. Number, you go to a good, a quiet place, just go away from distractions. You immediately put on some good worship music, something that's in season. Remember that when you were drawn in, it means that God wants to share something with you. 
not the other way around. Remember, God knows what is already in your life. He knows your problems. He knows your challenges. So it's no point in you speaking about your challenges all the time. The fact that God draws you into his presence means that there's something that he wants to share with you. Right? So silence is better than shouting. When you're in his presence, you keep your mouth shut. Then you go and you start with repentance and you say, Lord, forgive me for the sins that I've committed against you through words, through thought and through deed. I thank you that I have forgiveness through the blood and the sacrifice of God Jesus and his finished work of grace on the cross of Calvary. Number eight, you go into prayer and then you can start with your prayer requests. Get those things out of the way. Otherwise, your prayer requests will cloud your time with God. It will cloud your mind. What do I mean with this? So many people go into prayer and approach the throne of God. And the problem that you are facing at the moment is so big in your mind and in your heart that that's the only thing that you speak about while you spend quality time with God. And in that case, you can't call it quality time with God because that the only thing that you talk about is your problems. And by doing that, you're making your problems bigger and more important than God. So remember when you want to go into prayer, get rid of all the problems and the issues. Get all the challenges out. If, if there's something that is in your mind, a problem that you want to pray about it, pray about it, get it out of your system. Let that thing go. Because that's the first stage of prayer for me. In fact, the first stage of prayer for me is really um, the worship and being drawn in. The second stage is really the repentance. The third stage is where you get rid of all your problems. You get the thing out of your system. Say, Lord, um, I've got this issue with this problem uh, with this person. I've got financial problems. Get those things out of your system because you don't want to speak the rest of your quality time of God about your problem. Get it out of your system. The last thing I want to mention with you uh, for you uh, is, is number nine. When you pray, you must pray scripture. This does not mean that you must stand here and just quote verse after verse after verse. No, 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 no. The, you're not a parrot. So, so when you say pray, in, pray scripture, it doesn't mean you're just quoting scriptures because that's not praying. That's not praying the word of God. No, 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 no. You're not a parrot. You can't just stand there and, and, and just quote scripture. Praying in, in praying scripture means that um, your prayer, that it means to pray your prayer request. And as the Holy Spirit reminds you of a verse, you pray that verse out loud. You have to verbalize it. Remember, there's power in your words. Proverbs chapter 18, 21 says this. Mark chapter 11, 23. There's power in your words. So when you pray for your problem, Holy Spirit would remind you of a scripture that fits that problem. Then you pray that verse out loud. You have to verbalize it. You have to release that word. When you do that, the engrafted word in, of God in you has the power, right? By praying this way, you tap into that power ooh, of the engrafted word of God in you. So when you pray for your problem and the Holy Spirit reminds you of a scripture, pray that scripture because there's power in that word. And when you verbalize it, you release that word. You also tap into the power of that word, of that verse. Right. For example, I would pray and say, Father God, um, you know, and uh, there's this demon in my house. I just woke up in the middle of the night. I, I was attacked and I want to start praying. And then I said, Lord, I'm scared. This demon is demon is is creating fear in me. And, um, and, and, and this demon is walking through my house. And the Holy Spirit would remind you of Psalm 91 that says, I will give my angels charge over thee to bear you up in your hands, lest you dash your feet against a stone. And though a thousand may fall at my side, they will, it will not get near unto me. And so you start quoting that scripture. And when you pray the scripture out loud, you tap into the power that is locked up in that word. And by praying that scripture, power is released from that word in the realm of the spirit. And that power comes to you. And now immediately you've elevated your prayer to a higher level because now you're no longer just praying your problems, but you're praying your problems and giving your problems a word. It's like giving somebody a prophetic word. You give your problems a prophetic word. And you say to your problems, but the Bible says, greater is he that is within me than he that is within this world. The Bible says, I shall not fear for the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Bible says that no weapon formed against me. And by doing that, there's a word, lock, power locked up in that word. But by verbalizing it and praying the scripture, I tap into the power of that word. And that power comes upon me. And now it is no longer I that's praying in me, but the word of God that it is that is engrafted in me. That word becomes alive. 
And it is no longer a written word, but it is now a living word. <laughs> My God, when you pray, you must pray scripture. Guys, I have to stop here. I have to stop here. I'm going to copy those notes for you. Uh, and then I have to go to rehearsal. Woo! I'm late for rehearsal. Um, so I've posted the first nine points that I wanted to share with you. Please take it, read it, make a note of it, um, and study it if you have to. I, be I believe this is going to help somebody to, to, to approach the throne of God correctly. And when you approach the throne of God correctly, I promise you something is going to happen in your prayer life. Angels are going to start visiting you. You're going to get angelic visitations um, as the Bible speaks when you start approaching the throne of God correctly. I promise you that after your prayer session, once, once you've approached the throne of God correctly, after your prayer sessions, you would go to sleep. And in your dream, angels will visit you. In your dreams, the Holy Spirit will speak to you because you've done the job correctly and that is the thing guys i'm gonna i'm gonna leave you um i think we're gonna do tomorrow night we can do um uh, um part two and I'll, then i'll give you the other points um as well guys you must have a blessed evening um it was good to quickly join you um god bless you guys love and appreciate you please share the broadcast because i believe it's gonna bless somebody out there um yeah god bless you guys